Good day, I'm Lucinda Gabriel. So today we are December 6, 2020. I'm just going to give it a minute to uh, just start up here and see if anyone comes in. My internet is not working, so I'm using Oxbot and I want to know if that's working okay. So if anybody's logging in, let me know. So last week we talked about does evil demon Satan exist? And it was a resounding yes for those of you that listened. And, you know, in the Bible, it's very clear. Jesus casted out demons. And, you know, there's always been this fight between good and evil. Um, you know, Satan and, and God. And, uh, you know, Satan is just a fallen angel that wanted to be God. And so that's why. He's roaming the earth right now and uh, just trying to, to get people to, you know, uh, bring along with him. So that's, that's what we discovered last week. So Satan is real, devil is real, and the demons are real. And this week I want to talk about how you open your life to them, how you open your home, how you open yourself up to demons. And I want you to really listen carefully to what it is maybe that you've been doing. That you might want to stop you might want to read up about because you know i'm only going to give you a quick overview and so if you have questions please you know don't hesitate and reach out and uh and let me know if if you have questions and uh you know and i can guide you to more biblical verses if you want but i'm just going to go over some things that people are doing and the reason why i wanted to do this was last well a couple of weeks ago I was visiting someone that I was actually praying for and in their house what I saw was um, these objects and you've probably seen them you know like it's like see no evil uh, see no evil ear no evil and speak no evil or something like that and when I saw that it was like the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said you know this person is not hearing you and not seeing what you want to show them because not only do these objects, you know, have this uh, curse kind of put on them to, to block out evil, it also blocks out good. So this is what the Holy Spirit put on my heart. So I really felt like I needed to share this with you. So I see Cindy's here. Thank you, Cindy, for listening. Um, you know, let me know if everything is going well because I'm using hotspot instead of uh, the internet because there's a problem with that today. And so if uh, if the picture is not good, let me know. If the sound is not great, let me know. Because I'll just, you know, shut down and I'll do it tomorrow night if that's the thing. So that's it. So tonight, what I want to talk to you about is how you open doors to demons. So last week we talked about whether they exist, and that's a resounding yes. This week we're going to talk about how people open doors to them. And you need to know this because they influence your life and you don't know it. So, um, we need to educate ourselves on the subject to protect ourselves from their influence. Because, you know, demons influence everybody. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm always talking to two audiences when I'm doing my lives. There's always the born-again believers and there's the non-believers. So, I need to always tailor my messages to both of you. And I want you to know that even people that call themselves Christian are affected by demons. So don't think that because you consider yourself a Christian that you cannot be oppressed by demons. Sadly, this subject is not talked about enough in the churches today. And many do not want to rock the boat and lose members because losing members is losing money. So I'm just going to close my phone here. Uh, so I'm not disturbed. So, yeah, so, you know, that's why it's not being talked about. But, you know, I have nothing to lose. And so the only thing, you know, uh, I have to gain is love and acceptance from God. And that's the only thing that I'm looking for. And so how can a demon affect you? Some people can be possessed and some people can be oppressed. Most often people are oppressed. Possession it does exist. It's more rare. And I've talked about this before. I'm sure I, I have. And um, so let's look at the definition of possession. One of the definitions, it says domination by something, 
such as an evil spirit, a passion, or an idea, a psychological state in which an individual's normal personality is replaced by another. So there you go. Your normal personality is replaced by another personality. So that's how you, you know, would see a possession. If you see the person, it's like it's not really like the person the way they used to be. Something changed. Oppression is a little more subtle. It says um, a sense of being weighed down in body or mind, like depression, an oppression of spirit. So an oppression of spirits is like depression. So uh, I'll come. I'll get into that a little bit more about how that can play out. So second, how do you know if you have a demon? Well, you can be affected physically or mentally by spirits. Physically, are you sick? The Bible is very clear about sickness and that it's caused by demons. And so either demons lead you to sin, which leads you to being sick and causes illness, or they attack you with sickness. So oftentimes, uh, you know, born again believers, when they do get sick, it's usually an attack from the devil that's trying to stop you from doing what you're doing, especially if you're busy in the kingdom. People that are not so busy in the kingdom are not so much attacked because they're not a threat to Satan's kingdom. So busy people are usually very spiritually attacked and it can be mentally, it can be spiritually, it can be physically like a sickness. So we have to be aware of that. And when we are aware uh, of what Satan is doing in our life, well, we can rebuke it and we can, uh, you know, ask other believers to pray for us and we need to be delivered from this, you see. So um, we see that uh, demons lead to sin, which causes illness, and they attack you with sickness, like in the case of Job or even the Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians 11. So in the Bible, there are clear examples of people who were, who were oppressed or possessed by demons. And I'm just going to give you a few quick examples. In Matthew 4.24, uh, there was uh, news about him spread through the whole country of Syria, so that people brought to him, Jesus, all those who were sick, suffering from all kinds of diseases and disorders, people with demons, epileptics and paralytics, and Jesus healed them all. So people who could not talk, talk, you know, were possessed by demons. Matthew 9, 32, people brought to Jesus a man who was blind and could not talk because he had a demon in Matthew 12, 22. So you can go and read that for yourself. I love the book of Matthew. Everything is in the book of Matthew. If you are depressed, anxious, experiencing phobias, are strongly addicted to certain things like drugs, alcohol, video games, pornography, sex, all those things, even food. Uh, if you have an uncontrollable and insatiable urge for something, it is most likely a demon that is causing it and you need to be delivered from it. This is not normal. And you know, that's the one thing when God was working in me and I started reading the New Testament um, and, and I, was, I was led to Torben and I saw his videos where people were being delivered. I knew, I knew, I knew in my heart that this was real because I had been saying for two years before that to a friend of mine, I said, it's not normal that nobody talks about demons today. Nobody's delivering people from demons. Jesus did it. Why? Why isn't anybody talking about it? It was like it disappeared. And that's Satan. Satan wants you to uh, think that he doesn't exist. He doesn't want you to know that these demons exist and what they're doing. So he's hiding it. But, I mean, we can still see more and more every day. I was not even hiding anymore. And you just got to look at, you know, all the new programs that on Netflix, you know, like... Uh, was it the, um, the prodigal son and Lucifer and all these awful, awful, awful series that are there. And it's basically, it's just, you know, Satan and he is trying to make you love him. You know, think, well, he's not such a bad guy. And that's what all these movies are about. Anyway, to get back to, to what I was saying, um, if you have uncontrollable urges, desires for things, it's likely, most likely a demon causing it and you need to be delivered from it so you know write me in private no matter where you are i have brothers and sisters all over the world that can you know reach out to you deliver you and if it won't be in person it could be you know from a distance it works the same 
Jesus said he, that he came to set the captives free. And this is what he meant by setting the captives free. He came to set us free from the devil and his demons. And so we as born again Christians, this is what we are called to do. Pray for people, deliver them, put our hands on people and heal them. And Jesus heals them through us. Third of all, how do these demons enter you, your life, and your home? This is what you really need to know. So first of all, how do they enter you like your body? So people who are possessed by demons, often it happens through the use of drugs or alcohol. And it can be through other things like trauma. Because, you know, sometimes we see children and we, we know they're possessed. Uh, you know, it, it does happen. And it's not drugs with them. So often it is a trauma somewhere in the child's life. But drugs are usually the culprit because um, it takes down our defenses. So for you know teenagers, getting into drugs is so dangerous for them because this is where the defenses come down and demons come into their life. And then they just get really addicted and they just can't stop. So that is one of the big ways. And then they get possessed and then they do things that they wouldn't normally do. And sadly, the, the worldly way of dealing with these things, because they don't talk about demons today, most 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 educated people don't believe in them they're not taught about it in their books and they're only taught to medicate medicate people and that just you know basically it's it's giving a person another drug that brings down their defenses makes them even more open to more demons so it really doesn't solve anything that's my opinion okay so um so, 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 so that's how we open ourselves up. Drugs, alcohol, trauma opens people up to being possessed by demons. Okay. Do things that they normally wouldn't do. Most commonly, we are oppressed. And this is when we let demons come into our lives. So how do we let them come into our life? Well, by certain practices and our lifestyle. I've done these things. So no judgment here witchcraft which was one of the biggest things you know reiki healing if anybody's offering which i've seen on the internet in the past days people offering reiki services run away please don't go there don't do that that is opening yourself up to demons tarot mediumship widja boards divination uh, any card readings yoga and i know a lot of people don't understand that but yoga is opens your what they call the kundalini and so you don't want to be opening yourself up to anything okay so do pilates instead pilates is just a stretching exercise so that would be much better because yoga is also worshiping the sun god which is another god than the real god and that is not good uh, like i said alcohol and drugs opens doors to demons video games leads to violence and depression. If you have teenagers, children, small children, get them off of the video games. Never let them go into these things because they're really, really bad for them. Many young people become depressed, uh, commit suicide because of video games. The isolation alone is difficult and they feel like they cannot stop and they become obsessed. And I remember this video that I saw of uh, this Indian guy, this young fellow from India that went to Torben at the center, the Jesus Center in Denmark, and he was telling his story on this YouTube channel, and how he saw, he, he saw the devil sitting in his chair when he woke up in the middle of the night, and the devil was saying, come here and play this game, and he had such a fright that he went to his mother, and, uh, and got her to pray for him, and anyway, he found Torben on, on YouTube and went there to be delivered, I mean, that's, you know, he really had the fear of God come over him, so that was really good for him. And people need to know the dangers of that. Pornography is another way people open themselves up to demons because it leads to sexual perversion. And eventually these people want to, you know, act out on what they've seen. They want to do these things. So demons are, are you know, come into them and can possess them and lead them to do, you know, these things that they see. Halloween, I'm going to talk about that next week. Next week is going to be about holidays pagan influence of all the days. So Halloween is going to be a little part of that. Uh, you know, when you're opening up your doors to all these, you think it's, mm, what's the right word? 
innocent. You think it's innocent fun, right? To dress up as a witch and a ghost and these things. And uh, it's not. It's it's not a game. Life is not a game. Very important for you. You know, the, the, the devil is real. These demons are real. And they are in it. There's a fight going on for your soul right now between the light and the dark. And every time you get closer to God, the darkness is going to come and try to drag you away. And I've seen it in my in my own life. Every time I got closer to, to the truth, the real truth about Jesus, the devil came in. And so another way we open ourselves up is beliefs. Believing that our loved ones, for example, can speak to us from the other side opens doors to demons because believing uh, that we can communicate with them lets the demons know that we're open to that. So they'll come in and pretend that they're our mother, our father, our loved one. And, uh, and we start talking to them and we think it's real. I know I've been there. It's exactly what happened the first time when I started to read the New Testament. I was 25 years old and uh, I was in university and I was reading the book of Matthew. And that's when I had these dreams about a, a loved one of mine that I just passed away you know six months earlier and I had all these experiences which I thought was real and I mean I just found out what was it 20 years later that all of this was demons so very important for you to know the truth that you know dead people are really gone that's it you know ghosts are spirits uh, and they're not your loved ones they're demons pretending to be your loved ones God absolutely forbade us to talk to the dead in Deuteronomy 18, 10, 11. So talking to anyone but God, the Father and Jesus, opens the door to the devil. All the same thing. Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. It's said in 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen, And it says in 1 Timothy 2, 5, there is one God and one mediator between God and mankind, and that is the man, Jesus Christ. Nobody else. And even, I'm warning you, even when you talk to Jesus himself, especially in the beginning and you're seeking for the truth, sometimes, sometimes, this is what happened to me. There was a false Jesus that showed up. So you really want to grab out to God and Jesus and read the truth and pray and uh, to not be deceived. If, if the spirit that comes to you, this is what happened to me when, you know, I was finding the truth before I was baptized. It was like the spirit came to me and was telling me all these messages and pumping me up, making me feel self-important. That's a big sign right there. Pride. Uh, I was somebody because hey, I was getting messages from Jesus. And, and they were really like, you know, making me feel like I was important because of that. And so I realized today that that's not the real Jesus. The real Jesus in the Bible is like you humble yourself. You pick up the cross every day and you follow me and you give up, you know, uh, your dreams for me, right? That's what it's all about. So you can see that when you know the real Jesus from the Bible, anything, any other energy spirit that shows up, you can tell the difference because you know the real one. And it's so important to get to know the real one. So Jesus said, God said in Hosea 4, 6, my people perish for a lack of knowledge. And that is so true because when you know the Bible, when you know the truth, you've read it all for yourself. Nobody can tell you anything that is untrue because you will know it. You can go into a church and somebody in the front can say something that's not true and you will know it's not true because you read it for yourself. Don't ever, ever, ever put all your trust in man. And God said it, he said, it is better to trust in the Lord and to put your confidence in man. In Psalms 118.8. So another way we can open ourselves up to demons, especially uh, I find Christians is our attitudes, ungodly attitudes and behaviors open the door, like taking offense. And I think I talk about this almost every week uh, is one of the biggest traps for Christians and the devil know, knows it. And so he's going to, you know, um, poke at you when somebody said something to you, he's really going to bring you to this place or try to bring you to this place to uh, hang on to the to the anger, you know, unforgiveness, right? A grudge, all the grudge. And that is a snare of the devil. Jesus said to forgive those who hurt you and pray for those who persecute you. So we have to be careful of this. Another big trap from the devil, especially for Christians, again, is pride. That's what I was just saying about me, you know, before I was baptized. 
the devil was making me all pumped up and proud because, hey, I was getting messages from this Jesus, which was a false Jesus. So, you know, pride is a big trap. And he will tell you, you can be somebody, you know, you're just not, you're just not anybody. You are somebody. And the devil will entice you to think that you need to do certain things to be loved, to be a certain way, to, you know, if you earn, if you own certain things, if you have so much money, all of these traps are of the devil because nothing, no thing, no person, no object, no money, no relationship will ever bring you the wholeness the peace and the joy that you are seeking because we are all born with a hole in our heart in the shape of Jesus that only he can fill. And the devil will tell you that all these other things are going to fill up this hole, but they never do. It's a lie. It's a lie from the devil. They will leave you emptier than you were when you started. So, you know, the drugs, the alcohol, the shopping, the food, the relationship, children, whatever it is, the devil is telling you, you need to be happy. It's never going to do it until you have Jesus Christ in your heart first. You have to have him first. And once you have him, everything else falls into place. Jesus said, this is to the lukewarm believers in Revelation 3. So important for you to to understand this is to the believers okay he says i know your works that you are neither hot nor cold i could wish uh you were cold or hot so then you so then because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot i will vomit you out of my mouth this is what he says because you say i am rich i have become wealthy and i need nothing i do not know that you are he says, uh, you do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. So he's saying to them, you know, you think you don't, you, you know, and these were believers already, right? They were born again. They were baptized. They believed. They had the Holy Spirit. And then they came full of themselves because they had money and all this stuff. And, uh, and they kind of forgot about him, I guess, or not, you know, spent so much time with him. And he said, you know, you need to be hot or cold. And, and basically he wants us hot. And he says, I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire that you may be rich and white garments that you may be clothed that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed and anoint your eyes with eye salve that you may see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock and if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and dine with him and he with me to him who overcomes i will grant to sit with me on my throne as i also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne so if he's saying this to believers how much do you think that he's calling the unbelievers to repent you know and to let go of worldly goods and worldly life and because this this life is only like um you know a breath it's going to be over very soon and uh, you need to figure out what's really, really important. So another way that you allow demons into your home, how do you let them into your home? And this is the part where I think it's very, very important. See, many cultures assign healing powers to certain stones and abilities to things, to ward off evil, trees and objects. And so they give power to them, you know. I mean, I used to do this too. I would buy a crystal because, you know, it brought wealth or happiness or joy. And sometimes, you know, we'd go in the store and they had these stones with peace written on it as if this stone was going to bring me peace, right? And we really believe that because, I mean, we're, we're naive. And, uh, and the Bible talks about that too. But these women that are naive, you know, they search and search and search and they never find. So... Uh, anything that we give our power to or not our power to God God's power to as an object instead of giving it to him is wrong Jesus God the Father are the only ones that can give us anything if we need joy and peace and love and prosperity or whatever it is that we need he's the one that we go to we don't you know have an object in our house to bring us good luck we don't wear something on our neck or, or clothes to bring us luck because that is so wrong. Only, only God, only Jesus can bring us that. 
So, uh, you know, crystals, rabbit paws, lucky charms, magic rocks, angel statues, you know, for healing and health and prosperity. I had all of these. I threw all of it out. Decorations, you know, angels and statues. Statues are idols, and God clearly said not to make them or bow down to them, which is the second commandment. Praying to statues is unbiblical, even if it is a statue of Jesus. No statues. Never, ever, ever pray to a statue that is unbiblical, like I said, as the second commandment of God. So you need to, to, to read up on this uh, to, to know this truth. Trends. This is important, people. Beware of the trends that bring cursed objects into your home. And you see, what most people don't realize is that uh, Satan has taken over, basically, the, the fashion world, the trends, um, you know, celebrities, Hollywood, all of that. And so, you know, when, like every year there's a trend, right, for decorating your home. And there's all these objects that come out. You have to be extremely cautious, especially... I see even Christians do this, okay? And so everybody really needs to be cautious and educate yourselves about what these things mean. For example, I'm going to name a few owls, you know, like it, that was the big trend a few years ago. I didn't know either, but this was a big trend a few years ago. Everybody, and I mean, everywhere you look, there was owls. Everything was in the shape of an owl. And I just invite you to look up the words Bohemian Grove, Bohemian Grove. And you will see that these people who are Satanists are worshiping this humongous owl. Okay, these are Satanists. So just putting that out there that you look up the meaning of these symbols. The pineapple, like what is the deal with the pineapple? If you do a little bit of research, you find that it talks about the pineal gland and that it affects the pineal gland. Satan knows all this stuff. Goat heads with horns. I mean, every store had them. You know, there was pictures of them. There was like the real thing made in um, in plastic, you know, that you could buy and hang up on your wall. Um, these are all satanic things. We should not have any of this stuff in our home. You know, I visited, uh, you know, many, many Christians when I went to Florida. I mean, it was the first time I ever met real Christians in my life. And so I was amazed to see their homes where they had very little objects. And the few that they had were, like on the walls, it was scripture. It was beautiful. Like Cindy, who was, who's listening right now, her home is absolutely beautiful. And it's filled with, with scripture on every wall. And that's what we should have. Not these, these things that we don't know where they come from or if they're cursed or not. So we have to educate ourselves on symbols. And there are a few good YouTube channels, and one of them is called The Fuel Project. I invite you to check it out. The Fuel Project, Know Your Enemy series. Excellent, excellent series on that. So Satan, you know, like I said, he's in charge of fashion and trends. And, you know, that's why we see clothes getting shorter and skimpier and tighter and more revealing. And this is not from God. God would not want us to dress this way. And if any clothes takes away the attention from your face, it's wrong. Okay, this is not the way God wants it. Hair pieces. I saw, um, I met I met this lady who, you know, she used to put hair pieces in. And, um, and the Lord spoke to her. The Holy Spirit said, no, stop this. This is not good. You know that hair pieces come, most of them come from India. And they are... Uh, hair that is sacrificed to the gods and the monks that work beyond the temple they take the hair and they package it and sell it to Americans or you know the western world <clears throat> excuse me so you need to be very careful about these things uh, new age practices books everything new age you know opens up doors to demons anything that speaks of magic powers is pagan and ungodly and unbiblical, okay, even what I call Satan Claus, okay, you know what I'm talking about, we'll talk about him next week, so we have to be extremely careful about these, anything, like I said, magical, whimsical, it's 
unbiblical. God doesn't want this. Okay. Just this past week, I saw an advertisement for mugs with people with their deceased loved ones depicted with wings sitting beside them. And, you know, people were like, oh, this is so nice and all this, but it's, it's not. It's deception. And this opens the door to the dark angels. And the Bible is very clear that Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. So don't buy these things and open doors. Be aware of trends, like I said about like the goat heads and stuff like that. And um, be aware also of music that you play in your home because and movies that you watch on TV. If they're swearing, that's the devil that you're letting come into your house. You know, if they are, mm, I don't know, sexually explicit, I guess, which most of them are today, uh, that's letting Satan into your home too with his ideas. Video games, they're all gateways to letting demons into your home because these things these movies especially and and they desensitize people to satan's devices so important for you to know that remember that satan is out to steal kill and destroy and he will do absolutely anything and everything to take you and your children to hell with them that's that's where it's all headed there's a fight for your soul right now so it's either you know heaven or hell and if you are not going towards jesus and being born again you're going with satan and he knows this and he doesn't want to let you go hell is full of people who rejected god and not who god rejected god loves every person and he doesn't want to lose one single one of you and uh, he but he will not allow sin to enter heaven that is why Jesus died for us, for our sins. So we repent. We believe in Jesus and what he did for us. We repent of our sins. It's like being in front of a judge, you know, and we, we, we've sinned. We're guilty. And Jesus paid the price. And all he asks is that we believe that he paid the price, that he did that for us. We look to him because he paid that price for us. And we repent from what we've done and we're forgiven. And, you know, it's so beautiful because God says that, uh, you know, our sin, he will remember no more. And it will be as far away from us as east is from west. And so, you know, really saying that we have a clean slate. Once we repent, we're born again and we're baptized. You know, we have a clean slate in Jesus. So um, unless a man is born again of water and a spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. So when you're gone when you're dead it's going to be too late then don't wait till you're dead because it's over you know the sad part that i see about catholics that it's a mis mis teaching is you know to pray for souls that are dead it's it's the biggest well not the biggest but one of certainly the biggest mm, lies is the only way i can call it that they tell people because the Bible is very clear when you're dead, you're dead. Okay. There's no such thing as purgatory. There's nothing in between. And so important for you to get this right because there, and there's no after, not, I wouldn't say there's no afterlife, but there's no uh, second life. You know, many religions teach that you'll die and you'll come back and you'll get another chance. Well, that's not true too. That's another lie from Satan. There's this life. It's over in the blink of an eye. And you have to get that truth. You have to find that truth and get it right before it's too late. It's so important. It says in the Bible, seek the truth and the Lord while he may be found. So, you know, if it's saying that in the Bible to search for him while he can be found, it's because it's important to find him before you leave, before you leave this earth. Because once that door is closed, it's over. And you lay asleep until judgment day. So anyway, that's my message. Be very, very conscious about, you know, the doors that you are opening up in your life to demons. And, um, you know, ask the Holy Spirit to look around your, your home. Is there anything, anything here that displeases you, Lord? This is what I did. And uh, I tell you, the, the fear of the Lord came over me. And I just did a big cleanup in my place. And even yet today, I keep asking him, Lord, because I would never want to do anything that would dishonor God. So, or have anything in my home that would dishonor God. So, so important for that. 
So that's it. That's my message. God bless you. I pray that you have a wonderful week. And if this message touched your heart, if you think it might speak to somebody you know that is like suffering from depression, fear, anxiety, um, you know, that they're oppressed in any way, if they have addictions, share this with them and hopefully, you know, it will uh, shed some light on what may be going on in their life and they will look for some help. So that's that's the whole point of this, you know, educate people. Because God said, my people are perishing for lack of knowledge. So we need to educate about all of this because time is short, my friends. Uh, every week, we're a week shorter. So I love you. God bless you all. And we'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.